if I go back to the pre-analysis framework that we saw before while discussing what's under the black box, the first thing we need to think about is what is the mathematical model to be solved? And then we'll talk about how to solve that mathematical model using the finite element method. And the mathematical model consists of governing equation, which is a differential equation, and boundary conditions. Let me talk about the, the governing equation. Going back to my graphic of the example problem, this indicates a tiny volume within the element, a vanishingly small volume within the element, okay? It's called a control volume, and in my next slide, I consider this volume. And let's say, you know, the dimensions are delta x, delta y, delta z, this being the x direction, you know, this would be y and this would be z. And I look in the limit as these become, these are almost zero, okay? These tend to zero. And that's why you say it's an infinitesimal control volume. Now, they're almost zero, but they're not zero because a whole framework falls apart if they become zero. That's a trick in calculus. You know, it's almost zero, but not zero. And it took me, you know, several years to figure out that that's a trick it's playing. And then let's do an energy conservation for this infinitesimal control volume. Let me consider this phase here. And there is a heat flow through that phase, which I will denote as Q sub X. And then there's a heat flow, actually this is a heat flow in, and then there is a heat flow out through that phase, which I will denote as QX plus, so it's going to be, you know, it's gonna be slightly different from that because, you know, that distance is vanishingly small. And that change I can find from the gradient. So if the rate of change of Q sub X um, is that, if I multiply it by the distance, I'll get how much it's changed, okay? And so that's, that's a small difference. And if, and you're gonna get higher order terms, you know, that are going to be proportional to delta X squared, delta X cubed, and so on. But in the limit, as delta x tends to zero, I can ignore that. So that's why this is, you know, this is important because I can ignore the higher order terms. Okay, so the heat flowing out is slightly different from the heat coming in. And I can write the, the net heat flow out is going to be, okay, this is going to cancel that, so it's going to be just the change from this phase to that phase that's given by this term here, okay? So that's that term. And now I can relate that to the temperature using Fourier's law. And many of you should have seen this before. It's a very, it's like the foundation of heat conduction. which says that, you know, the heat flow is proportional to the temperature gradient, okay? So if the temperature gradient was larger here, you'd get more heat flow. Um, if there was no change in temperature near that phase, then there is no, uh, there would be no heat flow through that phase. I think that's intuitive. And there's a constant of proportionality, which is K, and I get a negative sign and the negative sign you need because temperature, you know, uh, the, the heat flows from higher temperature, lower temperature, that is in the direction of the decreasing, decreasing temperature. That's what that negative sign indicates. K is called thermal conductivity, and we'll assume that it's a constant. Okay, and this gives me, this term gives me per unit area. So I need to multiply it by the area of the face which is going to be delta y delta z. Okay, so that's that area, and I'll get the net heat flow um, through any phase. So now if I substitute that back in here, okay, I'll get the net heat flow out in terms of the 
the temperature. But one thing to note is, you know, when I substitute it back, I have to differentiate this. So what will happen is I'm going to get a second derivative of the temperature. So let me do that. I'll get a term. So the, you know, the purpose is not to derive this uh, rigorously, but to do it intuitively so that you get a sense of what the physical significance of each term in the equation means. So you're going to get a term that looks like minus k d squared t dx squared and then you have you know delta x from here and delta y and delta z from there. Okay that's you know so this represents a net heat flow through the faces. And I'm going to be assuming 1D. So let me list assumptions here as I'm going along. So I have assumed um, one dimensional. So I'm going, you know, I don't need to, I, I'm saying that there, are, there is no heat flow through these phases um, or through this, you know, this phase. One dimensional or 1D. Um, I also have assumed that there is no variation of the temperature over time. So I'm assuming that it's steady. And I'll also assume that K is a constant. That is, we have con constant thermal conductivity. We can relax all these assumptions, but you know, just make the details um, more complicated. And I also say that you know there is another uh, term contributing to the heat, which is the heat generation. So I have some heat generation per unit volume, which I call Q. And so the net heat out, and, and Q, you know, this is per unit volume. So the net heat out is going to be what's flowing out minus what I'm adding through heat generation. So that's going to be minus Q, and that's going to be proportional to the volume. Okay, that's per unit volume. So that's going to be delta x, delta y, delta z. Now one thing, you know, one key thing to keep in mind is this term, or this term, accounts for what's coming in through the phases. This term, which I'll add here in, in a moment, accounts for what's coming into the volume. Okay, so they're, they're different that way. One is related to the, to the surface area, the other is related to the volume. And if I bring that in here, I'll get minus q, delta x, delta y, delta z. And if energy is conserved, you know, and I have no other effects, the heat going out plus uh, minus the heat added should be equal to zero. And I can divide through by delta x, delta y, delta z, and I'll get my final governing equation, which um, will look like k d squared t dx squared plus q is equal to zero. Okay, That's called the heat equation, and that represents energy conservation for an infinite small control volume. That's a governing equation. We need to, and, and you know, this is going to be defined over the length of the bar, and we, we need to add in the boundary conditions, which I'll do when I summarize the mathematical model.